Hey there, Algebra 2s. This is our video on roots, zeros, and x-intercepts. Roots, zeros, and x-intercepts. So we're talking here about um, polynomial functions and polynomial equations, the relationship between the two of them. So let's get started. Okay, so roots, zeros, and x-intercepts. Um, recall this strange looking expression here. The following are equivalent statements about a real number b and a polynomial function. Remember this is a polynomial function. If you look you've got x to the n power, so that's the degree of the function like we talked about last class. Uh, and that degree goes down by 1. You've got your ellipsis in between until you have 0 degree of x, so x to the 0 power and a to the m, or excuse me, a sub n, a sub n minus 1, and so on, those are just the coefficients. The n and the n minus 1 don't really do anything, they're just labels. All right, so given a polynomial function, x minus b is a linear factor of the polynomial, and we would, that would be when we see the factored form of that polynomial written out in binomials or trinomials. b is a zero of the polynomial function if you take your um, function you find a zero, that's what b actually is if x minus b is a factor of the polynomial expression. b is a root or solution of the polynomial equation where we actually take the p of x off and substitute it with a zero. And finally b is an x-intercept of the graph um, when we think about the actual graph. And this goes back to the bridge map we made in class. Think back to that, um, maybe even sketch it yourself, don't go back and peek, but um, it should be there in your notes. Oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. Very sleepy. Okay, so let's talk about this particular function that you see on um, the screen. Okay, so let p of x equal the opposite of x cubed, so negative x cubed plus 2x plus 4. And let's let x, let's let x equal 2. Okay, if that's the case, let's find p of 2. So that would be the opposite of 2 cubed plus 2 times 2 plus 4. So 2 cubed is 8, so negative 8 plus 4 plus 4, which comes out to 0. Good, all right, that tells us some things. That tells us that 2 is a 0 of the function p of x. And the fact that that's a zero, um, two would be a solution of the equation where p of x equals zero. So we got both of those. The point, the ordered pair, um, two, zero. Hold on. The ordered pair, two, zero. That's the x-intercept of the function. And x minus a 2, that is a factor of the function. So that's the interrelationship between all of these different parts. So you've got the factor x minus 2 right down here, corresponds to a 0 of 2, and a solution to the polynomial equation of 2, and the ordered pair 2, 0 as the x-intercept of this polynomial. So finding roots, solutions, zeros, that's a question of um, a little bit of factoring at this point, and the problems that you get will all be ones you can factor. But what if we went the opposite direction? We've already learned, and we'll, learn one, we'll review once more, that if a is a solution or a zero, a zero of the function, a solution of the related equation, if a is a zero, x minus a is a factor. So what if I said write a polynomial function in standard form with these given zeros, negative 2, 2, and 3. What you're going to do in order to um, do that, to fulfill that, is you're going to write the factors and multiply it out. So if negative 2 is a 0, then x plus 2 is a factor. If positive 2 is a 0, then x minus 2 is a factor. And if positive 3 is a 0, then x minus 3 is a factor. And then we have to multiply this out. And you want to look for ways to make the process a little bit quicker or easier. Um, for example, here, that's a difference of squares pattern. So when I FOIL that, 
I should recognize quite quickly, or I should really recognize from the beginning. When I FOIL that, I'm just going to get a um, binomial. All right, x minus 3, the other one. So now I'm going to go ahead and FOIL this all the way out. So x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 12. Let's double check. First, x cubed. Outer, minus 3x squared. Inner, minus 4x. Uh, and last, it's positive 12. So the polynomial function with integer coefficients, that's another thing we usually say that it should have integer um, or really integral coefficients. You want the ones that are going to be the smallest that just happen to be there. In this case, um, that's the 1, the negative 3, negative 4, and, and 12. Okay, so we figured this one out given the 0, so let's call this one z of x. And there's your um, polynomial. Function. Polynomial function. I went back in to edit that because it really should have said polynomial function. Okay, so given zeros, now you should be able to actually write the polynomial function to match um, those zeros, or that has those zeros. Okay, moving on. Multiplicity. Okay, so we can write a polynomial function. You can ignore the part about which problem we're looking at because we definitely didn't do all the problems that came out of the book. But look at that polynomial function there. You can see um, that the second one has repeated factors. When we say repeated factors, we mean literally the same factor more than once, and you can see it here because it's got this quantity squared. Um, and so that makes x plus 2 is a um, repeated linear factor. That means that the value negative 2 is a multiple 0, and it affects the way that the curve behaves at that um, point. Um, and that's something that um, we'll see um, in, in a minute. Um, since that x plus 2 appears twice, you say that the root negative 2 has a multiplicity of 2. In other words, it shows up twice. So let's go ahead and um, factor this expression, this polynomial expression here, and find out the zeros of this function. So we have um, a common factor, a GCF here. So we're going to be pretending this is 0 for the moment. We have a GCF of x squared here. So I'm going to take out the x squared and divide it out. I'm going to be left with x squared minus 2x minus 8 on the inside there, which absolutely factors. Um, I see x and x, and I believe it's minus 4 plus 2. So there we have, and the, so the zeros of the function would be 0, um, 0 again because of the squared part, x minus 4 set equal to 0 be 4, and x plus 2 set equal to 0 would give me negative 2. So we say that the value 0, the root, the solution 0, has a multiplicity of 2, meaning it shows up twice. And again, that's going to affect how the um, graph behaves at that point, and we're going to see more of that in a moment. Okay, um, we probably at this point have talking about, talking about, ta have discussed, let's try that, we probably at this point have discussed in class finding a relative maximum or minimum for a graph. And we're going to do that mainly using the graphing calculator, only because at this point that really is the most efficient manner that we have at our disposal. Finding a relative maximum or minimum is actually a little bit more difficult by hand and um, is so much easier if you know a little bit of pre-cal. So we're not going to worry about that. Um, so a relative maximum, as we said in class, would be the um, value of the function that goes from an up to a down turning point. So that would be like this one right here, be a relative maximum right here. And a relative minimum would be one where it goes from a down to an up turning point right here. And if it's not a relative max or a min, it might be a point that has a multiplicity where um, it actually bounces off of that point. Um, in fact, you can make a rule. If a root has a multiplicity that is um, even, like the zero here, the um, graph touches that point but goes back the way that it came. If a multiplicity is odd, as in the case of the four and the negative two here, it becomes a turning point. Um, okay, so let's put what we've learned into practice on our last slide here. All right, so we've got four questions to try out here, starting with factoring 
that expression in number one. So if you think you've got it on your own, go ahead and pause your video and try number one. All right, but I automatically see a GCF, so we're going to take out that GCF. It leaves me x squared plus 4x minus 5, which is factorable because I do know a pair of factors of negative 5 that add up to 4. And those factors would be positive 5 and negative 1. And so we have a factored polynomial. And we're going to be doing more factoring in class. Um, in fact, you should be preparing for a factoring quiz that is coming um, the same day that you need to have um, prepared this video for. Okay, next one, number two. What are the zeros of that function that's written out? Well, that's easy. We just take each one and basically set it equal to zero. So x plus one equals zero means x equals negative one. x minus three equals zero means x equals three. And x plus two equals zero means x equals negative two. So the zeros for this one would be negative two, negative one, and three. Number three. All right, so this time again, now we have the roots and we need to find the polynomial. So we're going to take those roots, 4, negative 1, and 2, and we're going to write it into three binomials. So the 4 gives me a factor, a linear factor of x minus 4. The negative 1 gives me a linear, linear factor of x plus 1. And the positive 2 gives me a linear factor of x minus 2. And so what we need to do now is we need to multiply this out. You're not going to be able to use FOIL all the way through the end of this, but I want you to be thinking carefully about what you do. Um, I'm going to multiply the first two together. So we get x squared. It would be minus 4x plus 1x, so it comes out to be a minus 3x when we simplify, and then minus 4. I'm going to keep it in parentheses, because I still now have to multiply that through the x minus 2. For this, just take each term and use it once through the binomial that comes after. So x squared multiplied through x uh, minus 2 gives me x cubed minus 2x squared. And the way I like to write this might help a little bit with um, simplifying like terms. Now multiply your negative 3x through the binomial. So negative 3x times x is negative 3x squared, and I'm going to line it up underneath the other x squared term. And negative 3x times a minus 2 comes out to plus 6x. And finally, the minus 4 multiplied through the binomial is going to give me minus 4x, and minus 4 times minus 2 is going to be plus 8. And when we add it straight down up together, we get x cubed, minus 5x squared plus 2x plus 8. And that's the cubic polynomial function. Just put, um, uh, let's do p of x again, out front so you're showing that functional notation. Excellent. Last one. What are the zeros of f of x is equal to x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x? What are the multiplicities? How does the graph behave at these zeros? Okay, so let's factor out an x, leaving x cubed, oh, excuse me, x squared minus 3x plus 2. So I need factors of 2 that add to negative 3, and those factors are negative 2 and negative 1. And this time there's no repeating. We don't have um, anything that has a multiplicity of um, two or higher, we have multiplicities of one, and each one will be a turning point. If I use just this little space here to sketch the graph, whoops, wrong tool, moving stuff around the screen again. If I use just this little space here to sketch this graph, you're going to have a zero at zero, or a, an x-intercept, I should say, at zero. You're going to have an x-intercept at two. Make a couple little notches, one, two. I have an x-intercept at 2, and you're going to have one also at 1. The beginning behavior of this, the end behavior, as we discussed in class before, is, um, let's see, cubic, negative to positive. So what we have for this is probably something along these lines. It curves back down, it curves back up, and it looks something like that. Now, I may have exaggerated a bit, and I didn't look at the relative minima and maxima. We'll do that part in class where we actually find that for this one um, and, and continue working on graphing. We're going to do a couple of graphs in class um, before this video is watched or before you guys watch this video. So I hope this wasn't too painful for you. Um, record your questions. We'll go over anything that you're not sure about, and I'll see you guys in class.